this guy who's been in the intros to the show since the very beginning. I think everybody kept wondering. I obviously had to be on the last show. This guy's real life name is Doug Huffman, and he's got his own website. Uh, you can look it up. It's like uh, Sierra Survival or something like that. And you go down my nickname for him because i got to have nicknames for everybody on the show. I call him Spider Hole Man. You know, what else would you call him? Uh, he, uh, you know, is there... Uh, when survival's a goal, into the spider hole. You know, that's what he says. So, anyway, um, you know, clearly he's put some thought into this, and he's got an extensive network of spider holes. He's got a root cellar with a very good amount of food storage. He's got, you know, um, uh, a group of people he's training to prep. He's got great knowledge of tactics and military situations. So he's got a lot of things going for him. I don't see too much about alternative, you know, energy sources or, you know, he's got this extensive network of of spider holes, but what if, you know, HSTF is, you know, that, that this whole part of the country is irradiated and he's got to bug out and that, that situation, you know, that place is no good. Um, he's not going to have spider holes anywhere else, so... You know, presumably, he, it looks like he probably has the skills to adapt anyway if he had to go bug out, but, you know, um, I'm not too sure, uh, you know, they didn't mention that part of it. So, I think the interesting thing about him was his whole plan for what happens when people loot him or people come to his place. And he says, well, I'm going to hide, and then I'm going to come kill them. And I thought, you know, that's kind of interesting ethically. Um, I mean, you know, most people are, their instinct is to hole up in their shelter, and then if people come, you know, make a decision about whether or not you're going to let them into your shelter, whether you're going to share with them, or if they're just hostile, then you can just drop them, you know, um, or if, you know, you got to evaluate whether you want to let them in or not, or you just want to, you know, that kind of thing. Um... The way he's suggesting this, you know, it seems to me like somebody could be completely innocent, uh, and they could just come up to his, you know, house or his shelter and say, oh, look, this is abandoned, you know. Maybe it's a family with kids. You know, they're th this this is, appears to be abandoned, you know. Uh, we need food for our children, you know. Let's take some of this food and, you know, we'll hole up here for the night. And, you know, here he comes, you know. Uh, he says on the, you know, after the prepper assessment, I'm your worst nightmare, you know. And he comes in and starts sniping all this family, you know. Um, I mean, he didn't really give them a choice, you know. He didn't, is that ethically right, you know. I mean, I know ethics are going to be a lot different, you know, when you get those scenarios. But it seems like part of the prepping community and, and you know, is trying to maintain some semblance of our way of life and civilization, you know. And, you know, just setting up people to be sniped, um, it's a little sketchy, you know. I, I don't know that I'd want to do that. And, you know, not only that, he's got all these young kids. How do they fit into this plan of his, you know? Are they going to come to the place and they're all going to hide in spider holes too and they're going to come out and start clipping people? I'd say, how's that going to be for those 12-year-olds that they're shooting other kids who just happen to ha ha pop up on his shelter. I don't know. Uh, that seems like that would be maybe a bad scenario to me, but um, I don't know. I don't think that that, to me, is a choice I could live with. I mean, if, if clearly they're rogues and, you know, bandits and, you know, you leave, um, fine, you know, pick them off. Uh, I'm good with that, you know. But the way he made it sound, I'm not sure he's going to be able to make that kind of informed choice about who he's going after. So, anyway, um, I'm, like I say, I'm really curious what other people out there thought about, if you've thought about that, or that part of his plan. Because it should be something about your plan, if you have a plan, is, you know, who do you give food to, who do you let in? That was even something that the hippie silo people said, you know, they had that kid come up there and they go, well, we're not sure if we're going to let you in, presumably because they're not hippie enough. I don't know. Um, and you don't, you know, they, don't, they may have had viable skills, but uh, we're not going to let you in unless you bring a lot of food. So I don't know, you know. But that troubled me a little bit. I don't know if it troubled you. 
but um, go into the big board. And my top of the board is the same. Solo bot, oh, just, that's not right. Solo botanist is not on the bottom. He's only next to bottom. Party cat chick is on the bottom. She's still on the bottom. She probably likes it on the bottom. I'm just kidding. I don't know. But that's where she's at. Uh, solo botanist, uber germaphobe, the dungeon master of seeds, the Mormon academic chick, and again, my new uh, arrival here, nightmare redhead mom. I think she's very similar to Mormon academic chick in a lot of ways in that they have some decent food preps. I gave the edge to Nightmare Redhead Mom because, and they're just—they're both just learning about weapons as the show commences. Um, they didn't have any bug out plans. Mormon Academic had a bag or two, and so does Nightmare Redhead Mom. But Nightmare Redhead Mom, I gave her the edge because they have kind of a little more securable area with their cellar that really Mormon Academic chick didn't have. Go down some of the same people: Trucker Prepper, Suburban Pond Yuppies. Thumb Dad. Then I got the Woodchucker, and I've got Hippie Silo Couple right there. And I don't know, you know, it's hard for me to rank them, like I say, because you can't deny. I put them above God, you know, put God Guns and Whiskey below them. I mean, you know, God Guns and Whiskey has a lot of supplies. He does not have a missile silo. But I feel like his attitude about prepping and the realization of what he's doing is better than what the Hippie Silo Couple have. Uh, I'm more confident in his ability to defend himself from the outside uh, as far as his abilities go. Now, they got a more defensible position if they knew how to defend it. I don't know that they do. Um, like I say, they're, they're hard to rank for me because I really don't know how to read them as far as what their ability to, de to defend that location and to thrive in it, other than they have a, you know, they talk about thriving in their jacuzzi. Going down... Uh, the same people till the bottom here. I'm going to give Spider Hole Man number four. Um, everybody else is the same. Uh, I did re rank two people. Uh, I, I'm, I switched Mountain Welder and Patriarch and Kids because, like I said, I don't think that they ever showed us the Mountain Welder how it had any guns. I'm not going to assume that. I think it was wrong for me to assume they did when the show didn't show that he had any. And then I put the shipping container of Fortress Drillers on top again. Because I think people made some good points to me about the missile silo people not being sustainable, not having any plan for what happens after they get out of the missile silo, um, that kind of thing. Spider Hole Man, I put in number four because he, um, you know, he has a good plan. He has people, he has a, a group, much like Patriarch and Kids. Of course, the Patriarch and Kids group is his family, so that's probably a little better. But he had a network of spider holes. His skills are probably more advanced than Patriarch and Kids. Um, he's not already bugged out, you know, like Reluctant Hillbillies. Um, he had food preps, but it wasn't like they were overwhelming, and it wasn't like um, he was had other preps that were really uh, impressive either. Um, I think it's about where he belongs, but, you know, uh, that's the final rankings for Season 1 for me, and I don't know if you agree, but that's where I wound up after watching the whole show. I think those are my top five, um, and let me know what you think. It's Western Kansas Prepper signing off.